Hello everybody, my name is Lilo Siegel, I'm from Germany and I like to share some of my knowledge that I got around sewing and about machineries for sewing for you here in YouTube. I have done already several videos about my industrial sewing machine here in YouTube, which the links you can find in the info box underneath this video. And just recently again, somebody asked me, well, I just bought myself a similar machine like yours, but I don't know how to take care of it and how to do the correct oiling for the machine. Could you please do a video of this? Okay. And that's why I'm here today and I'll show you and I'll tell you a couple of tips how I treat and how I take care of my machine. And you will see it is not difficult at all to take care of an industrial sewing machine. Well, first of all, you can see here on the right side that you have this viewing window because that is the main input for any kind of oil this machine will need for all parts to work correctly. And you see two marks on there, red marks, which gives you the minimum that should always be filled on oil and of course the maximum. Now, very important is that you do have the right oil. It must be a special machine, industrial machine oil, because there is lots of different ones. That's why that is more important than anything. And now you see already what I'm doing. There is this little hole above the top marking line and exactly that's where you fill the oil in. And I like to keep my oil approximately between those two marks in the middle. Of course, you wouldn't fill it all the way. That is not necessary, but just keep it somewhere between the two marks. Most of the industrial sewing machines have the same systems how to fill the oil. But in case if you have a much older model, then you might find on the top or behind on the machine head some more holes. These holes, you will see, do not have a winding inside. It's just a hole, not for putting any screws in or fastening anything to the machine extra separately. No, those holes on these elderly machines are also for oil. But those holes are only meant to put just one drop into these holes occasionally because there are certain other moving parts which are not being supplied by the main oil tank where we just a moment ago filled the oil in. So occasionally just drop one drop of oil into those holes and you're on the secure side. So to give your machine the oil that it needs is one important part. But just as important it is to keep it clean. And I don't mean just keep a little dust over the top occasionally. No, we got to have a close look at our needle plate, the transport, the bobbin, the bobbin holder, and practically everything that lies in that area where your actual stitching is happening because that is where all the sewing dust is gathering and building up. So you will need some good screwdrivers. I like to use nice long ones, especially for the screw on the back part, because sometimes there's so much other technique hanging behind the head there that it's not easy to get that screw out. That's why I like to use my nice long screwdriver here you can see the difference between them. So the screws are out. That means you can easily pick out or take out the needle plate and you clean that very well. I've done that already before I started this video. That's why it looks so nice and clean. But now we have a close look at our transport underneath. And now you can see there's so much dirt sitting around. And as you will know, there's many ways and many tools that you can now take this dirt out with. I'm trying to use, first of all, a long pin, a, a needle, mainly because I like to show you how thick that dust is sitting in there, actually, how it gathered up in there. And of course, what's very good to use as well are tweezers or a brush and a blower. 
I'm using all those kind of things at different times. And depending how thick the dirt is sitting in there, maybe the tweezers are better at one time to use. Sometimes it's enough to just blow it through. So you got to try what is best for you. But the important is that you get all the dirt out, that it's really totally clean by the time you get finished with your cleaning. And looking at this dirt that I'm getting out here, you can imagine the longer you wait, the harder it will set in there and you can do damage your machine if you do not do that cleaning regularly. And when I know I loosened all the dirt or got most of it out, then I take my blower. I'm sure you got one at home where you maybe blow up your balloons for the kids at home. I got a special one here which is being sold with sewing machines. So now I take this one and give it a good blow so all the leftover bits that might still hang around will be blown out of every corner out of the machine out. So I'm finished with cleaning everything that I can reach from the top. So I got to get all my strengths together, my power and lift the machine because it's got a bit of weight. I must admit that I really had to push it now towards the back. So also here you can just wipe over a little bit if you wish. But the main part which is now important is to look where the bobbin holder is. And as I loosened a lot of the dirt already from the top towards the bobbin holder down there, that's why it's handy to just take the blower again and first of all try to blow whatever is loose out of that area out. That will end up lying in the oil trip tray, which is underneath where I'm just doing some wiping here, as you can see, because that should also be nice and clean and tidy always. And now I'd like to share with you one of my favorite tips of all. Before you start your cleaning, when the machine is really filthy and dirty, do a little sample sewing, just 10 centimeters. Not because of the stitching, but because of the sound that the machine makes when you're sewing. Exactly the same sample test of just 10 centimeters you will also do when your machine later on is totally clean and oiled. And again, you listen to that sound the machine makes then. And you will not believe the difference because of the dirt that was in the machine. It sounded hard and heavy. And after you've done what I'm showing you now, this little trick, your machine will sound smooth and quiet and going easy. The sound that that machine makes then will tell you that it's feeling so well after the treatment. So make sure it's really clean. Maybe go with a brush through again to really make sure or with your blower. Mainly the thread cripper and the shuttle. They must be very, very clean now. And then after that, when you said that's it now, take your oiling can again. And on the point, the little point, which is the thread cripper, that means it picks up the thread to go around the bobbin and the bobbin case to actually create the stitch you want to do. On that point exactly there, you put one tiny little drop of oil. Then all you have to do, close up your machine again, fasten your needle plate and do the test sewing as I mentioned before. And you will not believe the difference. Well, everybody, and that was it for today. My little tutorial to tell you how I'm treating, how I'm taking care of my industrial sewing machine. I hope it will help you to understand more things about your machine in case if you yourself buying yourself such an industrial machine and I know you will not regret it. So take care, stay healthy and leave me some comments where in this big, wide, beautiful world you're watching me from. I would really enjoy this. All the best to all of you. Until next time. Bye-bye from Germany to you wherever you are.